the scripture talks about the signs of the season change and we will first talk about many signs that most people have been doing for many generations up to thousands of years ago. What are the signs? First, I like to talk about marriage. Second, I like to talk about religion, one man. And third, why are Hmong people so poor, so few, and we don't have a nation? Hmong is a very big topic to talk about. I read the Bible much and know that the Benjamin people are the people the Bible taught most compared to all the people in the Bible. Most of the people of this world are not God's children and are not in the Bible. The Bible can talk about Nimrod. Nimrod was the son of Ham, the son of Noah, after the great flood. Nimrod was the first on earth to be a mighty man. That's in Genesis 10, 6 to 14. The Bible can talk about people of Esau. They are mighty hunters and warriors. The tribes and children of the ten sons of Israel. The Bible can talk about the children of Joseph after the death of Joseph but said that they all are blessed of good lives. The Bible talks about true and faithful hero and mighty warriors of God. The key verse of the Bible is this. God said, Jacob, I love. Esau, I hate. We are from the branch of Jacob, the anointing one, the children of kings anointed. If the Bible would tell it more detail, it would take a lifetime to study them. I would like to know more about Melchizedek, king of Salem, king of peace, Enoch, Nimrod, Dabrah, Barak, and the list goes on. God said to Jacob, I love and Esau, I hate. Jacob, I love. And Esau, I hate. God's love and assignment to Enoch, Nimrod, Melchizedek, Dabrah, Barak, and many other mighty heroes are complete and not a continuing assignment for them anymore. But Jacob's branch, the Benjamin or Hmong, God still loved very much and want their people to be saved. The Bible focused on the Benjamin people and God's love keeps on coming to save the Benjamin out of trouble. All of the Benjamin people are the most troubled and other nations unite to kill them over and over to completely kill all the Benjamin, God doesn't allow the Benjamin people to completely all die. God loves Benjamin so much that God always finds a way to help them succeed. I know these three things are good enough to prove that Mom came from the branch of Benjamin. And first, I'd like to talk about marriage. Okay. Marriage, in the book of Judges, chapter 21, verse 16 to 24. And y'all come out, y'all zip zip, chung nung go yi, de go dao dun nung go blau nang, man hai dear. The elders of the assembly says, with the woman of Benjamin destroyed, how shall we provide wives for the men who are left? The Benjamite survivors must have heirs, <clears throat> they said, so that a tribe of Israel will not be wiped out. 
We can't give them our daughters as wives since we Israelites have taken this oath. Cursed be anyone who gave a wife to a Benjamite. But look, there is the annual festival of the Lord in Shalom, which lies north of Bethel, east of the road that goes to Bethel to Shechem and south of Lebanon. So they instructed Benjamites, saying, Go and hide in the vineyard and watch. When the young women of Shiloh come out to join in the dancing, rush from the vineyard, and each of you sees one of them to be your wife. Then return to the land of Benjamin. When their fathers or brothers complain to us, we will say to them, do us the favor of helping them because we did not give wife for them during the war. We will not, you will not be guilty of breaking your oath because you did not give your daughters to them. So that what the Benjamites did while the young women were dancing, each man caught one and carried her off to be his wife. Then they returned to their inheritance and rebuilt the towns and settled in them. Yeah. At that time, the Israelites left that place and went home to their tribes and clans, each to his own inheritance. Growing up, I heard my brothers and many men talking about marriage. Kidnapping is how many Hmong men do to get married to the girl he likes. Kidnapping young women to become wives is part of Hmong lives for thousands of years. I don't know how, I don't know the reason why many Hmong marriage is involved in kidnapping. You are Hmong, what do you think are we the Benjamin people? And is this really happening to Hmong people? To kidnapping girls to become wives? Are there other people that have a history of kidnapping girls to become wives? As the first choice of marriage is a good relationship to the girl before he married her. If this doesn't work out because she doesn't like him to be married to him, then he still wants her and no matter what, then he will talk to his brothers and cousins to help kidnap this girl to him to be his wife. Do Mom have stories of history of this? Kidnapping young women to be the wives? Mount do this because in memory of historical event and happening to Mount's life. Since they didn't know how to put into writing for the future generation to know and learn from. I heard Mount have many stories as grasshoppers and monkeys at war. How the ocean was once very fresh and it is became salty and many stories I heard when I was young. They said now it has become a story, but most of the stories are true from the past. When I was young, I believed whatever the older brother says. Most of the people of no language and writing of their own. To put all this into writing as history, and information for the future generation to know and learn from. Hmong parents and people have turned history into parables and stories to tell the younger and future generation over and over of all the stories and parables. So Hmong don't won't lose the history since they don't put all this into writing. 
I believe the story of grasshoppers and monkeys at war might not at all be about animals, but parables of the lives of Hmong people in history, having war over and over. Hmong people are the prodigal son and the lost sheep throughout the Bible. Hmong parents talk about Adam and Eve, Moses, and many stories to their children, so we won't lose the history of our culture. Kidnapping girls to become wives have been in Hmong culture for I don't know how far back in history. I call it girls and boys because our parents want the girls and boys to be married at the young age of 12 to 20 years old. Hmong children have been married at this young age for many generations. Most of the people in the Bible marry very young too. One reason I heard was some boys didn't know how to talk to girls to be loved by them. Since he didn't know how to get the girl he liked, his brothers would go kidnap her to him for his wife. Kidnapping girls to become wives becomes a culture and a worldwide thing to the Hmong people for well, I don't know how long back in history. In the book of Genesis 29 verse 21 to 27, upon the Tikeng, Chong Nengu Tiwang Nengu Itza Nengu Xia Ke, and it says, when morning came, there was Leah, so Jacob said to Laban, What is this you have done to me? I served you for Rachel, did I? Why have you deceived me? Laban replied, It is not out in our culture here to give the younger daughter in marriage before the older one. Finish this daughter's bridal week, then we will give you the younger one also in return for another seven years of work. I understand that the older sons and daughters need to get married first in respect that they are older and wiser than the younger sons and daughters. As if you disobey your parents and you marry first before your older brothers and sisters, you become a curse disrespectful to your older brothers and sisters. The scripture said that if the younger sons or daughters disobedience to the older or to the parents, they must be taken to the judge to hear if it is true or not. If you hear the son disobedient to the father and you do not, you do nothing to it, Someone might see you do nothing to solve this. You will be killed by the judges for not reporting the bad news. They will report you to the judge saying that you see everything and you do nothing to solve this. If the firstborn son argues and disobedient to the parents, the parents must report this to the judges and all the people must stone that evil person to death so that the entire group can see and stop doing evil. Mom parents recommend only marry, marry one wife, but if you have married two to three wives, you need to be able to balance your marriage. In the same way, God don't care if you marry four to five wives, hundreds or thousands of wives, as long as you can handle your marriage and still love God. After the death of King Solomon, many kings also married many wives. This is only in history and Bible time before the birth of Jesus Christ. 
God doesn't allow one man marry more than one wife anymore. The scripture said, Jacob came to this place to get married to only one wife, but he had four wives. Most mom people only recommend to marry one wife, but the older must marry first before the younger can get married. If the older son dies, he believe, I believe all his four wives will go to the next younger son in the same way as of one wife. In the book of Genesis, it talks about Judah and Tamar. Judah had three sons. The oldest son married Tamar. Not long after they married, the older, the oldest son died because he was wicked in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord put him to death. Then Judah gave his second son to Tamar as her husband. But he doesn't, he didn't like, he didn't want to get married to Tamar and refusing to sleep with her, then the Lord also put him to death. Then Judah refused to give his youngest son to Tamar, thinking that the third son would die too if Judah allowed Tamar to have him. Mom culture if the older son married to a wife and he died for whatever his reasons, the younger need to accept the older son's wife to be his wife and love her as he loved himself. The Bible said that Judah gave his second son to Tamar after the first son died. Judah then gave his third son to Tamar while the second son was still living but refused to marry Tamar. As if the girls and boys don't have a choice of their own. If you were mom 50 years ago, if you do not get married to one you love, your parents will find a spouse for you who you most likely won't love him or her. These two examples of marriage, mom people have been doing for many generations. Not the second sign is about what nine and rules to live by. Okay? The second sign is what nine and rules to live by. The book of Leviticus and Deuteronomy, okay? talks most about what nine and rules to live by. When a person sins, is sin or unclean? What will he need to do to purify himself and his family? Um, in the example of Ikedai Leviticus chapter 16, verse 3, 11, 14, 15, 16, it says, Aaron shall come into the holy place with a bull from the herd for a sin offering and a ram for a burn offering. Aaron shall present the bull as a sin offering for himself and shall make atonement for himself and for his household. He shall kill the bull as a sin offering for himself and he shall take some of the blood of the bull and sprinkle it with his finger on the front of the mercy seat on the east side. And in front of the mercy seat, he shall sprinkle some of the blood with his finger seven times. Then he shall kill the goat or of the sin offering that is for the people and bring its blood inside the veil and do it with blood, its blood as he did with the blood of the bull. 
sprinkling it over the mercy seat and in front of the mercy seat. Thus he shall make atonement for the holy place because of the uncleanness of the people of Israel and because of their transgressions, all their sins. So he shall do for the tent of meeting which dwells with them in the midst of the uncleanness. Now it's about life of the flesh. Okay? Life of the flesh is in the blood. The scripture reveals the reason for blood sacrifice and how they are revealed to atonement. That is covering for sins. Okay? The atonement means the animal's blood represents its life. That's in Therefore, the price of atonement for human sin was the loss of blood. In the home society, when they sacrifice the animal during the shaman or nun ritual, they use the blood of the sacrificed pig to stamp on the sick person's forehead or his upper back as a protection. In the book Exodus, God's last plague to show Pharaoh's God's power and authority, he told Moses to tell the Israelites to sacrifice a young lamb and put its blood on the door, on the outside, so when the destroyer comes, they don't kill the firstborn son inside the marked door. This is about the reason why all believers should not eat blood. Hmong people don't have a language to keep all this in writing. And also some Hmong diso disobey the command from their parents and eat blood anyway and says it's okay eating blood. Blood is the life energy that gives life to humans and animals and we should not eat blood. All these are examples of what men Blood is as their spiritual money. It says Christ using his body to buy us back to God from Satan. Well, none is a very big thing in the modern life because it has many reasons as spiritual healing. Atonement is necessary to cover the sins that we commit against God. Sin is like borrowing money, and we need to pay back. If we don't pay back, it is considered a thief and punishment. All sin requires atonement. Okay? Again, the atonement is called the What then became all sins is a rebellion against God and spirits. The Old Testament talks about animal used for sin offering in the same way as for men. As you need to kill animals every year for the sins of the people, the New Testament used Jesus, children of God, means Christ's death already washed away our sins. And we are not an orphan, but a child of God. We have parents and family 
now for God is our heavenly Father. What name is for the unbelievers? And Jesus Christ is for the believer. And now the third sign, what is mountain? The shepherd taps at the mountain, what is mountain? I like to talk about one people. The one people the Bible talks about most is the Benjamin people. These two examples are enough to prove that most people are the Benjamin. Half of the Old Testament talks about the Benjamin. People, that is how big this topic is. It would take some months or close to one year to talk about. The Apostle Paul in the New Testament also is the Benjamin. Knowing the lives of Mom will take closely one year to know because half of the Bible talks about the lives and people of Benjamin. We have just studied the two examples that Mom people do. So what is a Benjamin and how does it all begin? It all begins after the flood. God flood the earth and all the people of the world dies and God began a whole new generation from Noah and his three sons and their three wives. Noah's three sons are Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Noah's son Shem is the father of Abraham. Abraham the father of Isaac. Isaac, the father of Jacob. God renamed Jacob to Israel. Israel has 12 sons, represent 12 tribes and groups of Christians. Two youngest sons of Israel are Joseph and Benjamin. Asked if Joseph was the blessed child and Benjamin was a cursed child. A cursed child. Okay, what is a cursed child? I need to know why I call it a cursed child. Many times Satan don't want God's children to succeed and cause someone in the family to sin, to have a curse upon their life. Many times the Bible talks very much of sin and evil known as a curse. And repentance is the only way to correct the wrong and turn toward God for help to be blessed and fruitful again. Again, this is a very big topic. I do as little as I can for the message. Okay. Why a curse? The example of Adam and Eve sin. Cain killed Abel, Ishmael and Isaac, Jacob, and Esau. King David has sin of adultery and murdered the husband of that woman to cover up his sin. Because King David's sin of adultery and murder that caused happened to all, yeah, that curse happened to all David's children commit adultery and murder over and over throughout the Bible. Joseph and Benjamin are the children of Rachel. As if Joseph is the blessed child and Benjamin is the cursed child. Rachel sinned by stealing her father's household gods. Rachel died after giving birth to Benoni. But Israel called him Benjamin. As if the branch of Benjamin has been a curse ever since after his mother Rachel died. Sin. Most of you know the life of Joseph, that his life was not easy at all. I believe his younger brother Benjamin's life are much harder when the Bible does, which the Bible didn't say anything of Benjamin. 
but talks very much of the children, tribes, and groups of Benjamin. When Israel, the father of the twelve sons, about to die, he blessed all twelve sons of different gifts. And in the book of Genesis, chapter 49, verse 27, okay, and Israel blessed Benjamin and said, Benjamin is a ravenous wolf in the morning devouring the prey and at evening dividing the spoil. Benjamin people are like the lost sheep if you read the Bible, you know that the ten brothers hate the two youngest brothers, Joseph and Benjamin. Coming back to what we have just read. Okay. In the book of Judges, 21, verse 15 to 19, okay. the, Bible, the people grieve for Benjamin. Because the Lord had made a gap in the tribe of Israel. And the elder of the assembly says, With the woman and Benjamin destroyed, how shall we provide wives for the men who are left? The Benjamin survivor must have heir, they said, so that a tribe of Israel will not wipe out we can give them our daughters as wives, since we Israelites have taken this oath. Curse be anyone who gave the wife to a Benjamin. But look, there is the annual festival of the Lord in Shalom, which lies north of Bethel, east of the road that goes to goes from Bethlehem to Shechem, and south of Lebon. Scriptures on Judges 21 is about the ten older brothers, group, and people unite together as one big group to kill the Benjamin people. Their plans was to kill all the Benjamin people, but God won't allow. Benjamin's life was very hard for himself. That is why his father, Israel, blessed him and called him the ravenous wolf. Benjamin is a wolf for him to survive and succeed. A wolf stands alone, and many times over, they don't have help from others. Many nations, tribes, and people are helping each other but not the Benjamin people. Many times the scripture says the ten <coughs> tribes are against the Benjamin people. Many scriptures say many people and nations want to completely kill all the Benjamin. But God just won't allow it. The ten brothers hate Joseph and Benjamin and find every way to harm them in every moment of their lives. This is the reason why the people of Benjamin are being killed over and over throughout the Bible. From the time of Moses to now, King Saul was the Benjamin people and served God. Since King Saul did succeed, the kingdom goes to David and his generation. After Jesus Christ came and went into heaven, God select Paul for the ministry, which he was also a Benjamin people. The life of a Benjaminite is not easy at all. King Saul and the apostle Paul's life was very much one man against the people of nations. Paul goes through trials of beating and stoning, without food and without clothing, without a home or people that can help him. 
the line of a godly man and woman of true faith to God was never easy. Noah, Abraham, Job, Joseph, Moses, Joshua, Deborah, Ruth, Esther, Leah, Rachel, and many, many others. All this hero's life was not easy at all. And all the faith and hope were only upon God to deliver them. A true Christian life is like our Lord Jesus Christ. Life is so hard for us because we are mom and we are the light and salt to this dark and evil world. Benjamin has the character of a wolf in them. Even though they stand alone, they know that no one will stand for them but their very own people. Our people are being killed from one place to the next and spread out to other nations and countries. That's that the scripture says the Lord kills the shepherd and all the sheep scattered all over the places. Many become lost and others are being killed. Other people and nations kill all our great leaders over and over. This is why we don't have a wise and strong leader. The moment they know some vengeance among people wise are strong enough, they will find a way to kill them. This is the reason why Mom don't have a country of their own. And Mom don't have a strong leader to lead his people. We are human beings. We make mistakes and ask all this killing Benjamin people in the Bible or of killing among leaders for many generations is an example for us to learn to humble ourselves to God. And for among people to love one another, for no one will love among but their people. A message Mom said to many generations. Okay? Because faith is not a good thing. My mom is not a good thing. My mom is not a good thing. My mom is not a it is God alone that loves more people, so much more than other people of the world. God wants more to not have a rocky and hardened heart like the Israel people that always complain to Moses and God. You see so much example throughout your life and hear so many historical lives of Hmong. Chin Chinese and Japan war, flood, tornado, earthquake, and so much more. The Bible has so much to say about sin as an evil thing and separation from God and God wants all to repent of their sins so the people can fellowship with God. God said, the worldly hates me because you love me, the worldly also hates you too. Although most mom, although most mom doesn't believe God, mom stays strong to the history and culture and life, live a holy life like a pair of dove. 
many Hmong, the Tao Tu Hmong, still follow a lot of the Tao Ya. Oh, not the most sacred Jai. The Tao Tu Hmong just to follow a lot of examples from the most sacred Jai. Dove, okay, don't mean no, no, don't want no. Dove are birds that have the greatest love for one another. When one dove dies or separate from the other, the, they won't eat food for days and days until they die. Because they lost their parents. Sorry, Mina. I love you. ออตุโบเกลกอมิตุจัยตุโรชิตุเซลเตคุกวอนะนี่ติลีจินอมอเลนะนี่ติจินอมอเลนะติลีนอนอนอซอนติตอนนี่ละซึนโอเคมานุย
and we go back 100 years more, there will be so much more war stories to talk about. This is why most people are scattered to many places and lost the original language and writing. The Bible talks so much about God's love to Benjamin for Hmong. Most Hmong people are very scared of change and learning new things, maybe because of much war from the past. Many Hmong still want men and keep the old life even though they know many are no longer benefit or good to them. Many Hmong still believe superstitious even though they are Christian. They still believe many of these past wrongs and sins still happen to them knowing they need to do this or that. Don't eat this. Don't say or do that because the spirit can see or hear too. Even many Hmong people came to accept Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. They just come to church but does not really search for the eternal life to be with God. Most Hmong Christians go to church thinking they are saved and go to heaven after this life. They reject the message of the Holy Spirit and speaking in tongue, thinking this speaking in tongue is of the operation of unclean spirit. Add one thing to the message before we end, okay? Okay. We are human beings and we all have sin. Mistakes are words we use when we get caught sinning. When you get caught with your wife by dating with another woman, you cheat to pass your homework test. You go fishing and hunting even though there is a big sign that says no fishing and hunting. Mistakes is when someone caught you do wrong or got caught some big, got caused some big happening as a tree fall, a car crash, airplane broke down before the flight for the safety of the people. Okay. The Bible is full of sins and mistakes for us to read, to learn the mistakes of what others did so we won't follow the pattern and do the same as they did. And Jesus said to the woman, go and sin no more. Go and sin no more. But they said, do we need another person just like Jesus to remind us of our wrongdoing? Do you feel bad or ashamed of yourself for sinning? You might not care or love yourself. That is why you sin. When you sin, it's not only you that are hurting, but your spouse, your parents, family, friends, and relatives. And all are hurting in the same way as you because they love you. And so much more about you, more hunger and talk about trauma. Okay. The much you do, you be chat. The more you more about you chat. As if one person sin, the whole group gets blamed for. God wants us to correct our sins, mistakes, and said, "Don't sin anymore. No more mistakes. No more adultery. No more cheating." No more lying, no more stealing, no more sin after sin, or mistakes after mistakes. A sin, so it's how now, is a sin. Either it's a small sin or a big sin, it is a sin. 
It's only a little lie to get myself away from my wife. It's only a little mistake I made because my friends lead me into adultery. It's only a little drug, a little stealing, and a little mistake. This world is full of evil and bad things. As if it's okay for others to sin, and it's not okay for me to sin. It's all about correcting ourselves and get us back to fellowship with God and to the people that love us the most. The only way for us to get back to God, to family, to friends, and relatives is to repent of our wrongdoing and say, I am so sorry of the wrong and mistakes I have caused to God and to all the people that love me the most. And do you know the love of God? Can you measure the love of God? The love of God is as big as this universe, heavens, and hills all put together. Yes, hallelujah. That is how big the love of God is. Do you know the love of your parents and family? Your parents and family love you as a mother, chicken protecting her babies from hawks, snakes, wolves, and more. The love of a mother and father is as big as this world. Okay. Your parents and family love for you are like treasures to them. They put their lives in danger for your safety. God wants us to practice repentance of our mistakes and sin so that we can become more obedient to God. God loves more very much and God bless you all listen. ตอนนั้นเราเราบอกว่าเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเราเรา
So I had a shower and better color of the paper that you look at the Holy Spirit love of the paper that said she is everything all that's possible. You're not going to that Jesus gave you. You know, that's not that. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen.